Hello students, welcome back to today's science class and today we will be talking about the chemistry and and this part which is part 2.3 part 2.3 is about the charges of the ions and there are some that you have to memorize and some that you need to work out the um, ions and then the ionic compounds how to write the formula of the ionic compounds and how to write the symbolic um, reactions that happens in the ionic compound, compounds or in making uh, molecules uh, and also to balance the equation. So first, um, what you have to know is that um, for the ions, uh, there are actually atoms when they are losing or gaining uh, electron, they become charged, so positively or negatively, so that's why we call them ions. And if they lose one or more electrons, so they are positive, if they get in or they get one ele get electron or electrons, so they become negatively charged. So what happens here um, is that uh, how do we know that the, how the atoms are charged? As you know, group, um, most of the metals, the metals are all metals. When they become ions, they actually become positively charged ions because they need to uh, lose electron to become ion. So most of the metals there are positively charged and the non-metals, non-metals, negative charge. So how do we know that which one is metal, which one is non-metals? Or easily just the non-metals, what are non-metals? If you know non-metals, then you will guess the metals too. So um, actually all halogens, um, group 17, actually, or the halogens. And novel gases, no, novel gases actually, they, are, they, are, they cannot become charged, so they don't have any charges because they don't lose their gain, so they're quite a stable. And the other one is the uh, boron, silica, astatin, selenium, Tellium, and also these ones. Um, we can call them as a schnapps, which is carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and this one is the, of course, the selenium and sulfur. So these are all non-metals, and anything other than that one, e, this one is, is metal. So they get Except this one, this non-metal, hydrogen is positively charged. You remember this one? Yep. Our group number one metals, the group number one metals, the, the ions of the group number one is one positive, one positive one, and like, like this, one positive, and group two, is two positive and group and uh, group four no five group five like nitrogen and others uh, is three negative group six is two group seven is one negative and one also that you have to memorize is charge is group three aluminum aluminum in group three it has actually a charge of three so it is three plus and another one that you have to memorize is ag or silver that is iron is ag plus and zinc that you have to memorize zn its iron is zn to plus Okay. When the non-metal they become ions, they form ions, 
The name of them at the end changes to IDE, like sulfide, like oxide, like nitride. So you put one IDE at the end for the non-metals. So if I want to show, for example, like in a case of the fluorine, F, it has actually nine electrons and protons. So in the normal condition, the ground stays when it's an atom. It is the electronic configuration of it. I don't draw the nucleus anymore. I just draw the shells, one shell and two shells. So it has two electrons here and the first shell and nine positive protons in the middle. Uh -huh. And this one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in the last shell. Now, when it becomes iron, it gains one electron. It gains one electron and changes to the uh. ion. Okay, then, um, so for the... For the halogens, for example, like the fluorine, we have example here. So this is the basic the basic structure of the atom. This is the electron configuration when it is a ground state. So as you can see, it has seven electrons on the last shell, and one is just left. Um, that if I put another one electron, so it becomes full in a certain electron structure that we have and become perfect. So I add I want more electron to it. So an ion of the fluoride actually ion is formed. Actually, we said that the non the non metal ones they get ID. So when you change the ion, so fluorine changes to fluoride ion, and this is the structure. But something is missed here. You have to put this into the bracket and put one. Minus means that it has only um, taken one electron. And the next step, what you have to know, there are some kind of the ions, the non-metal actually ions that you have to memorize, and there's no other way. So what are they? The one that you have to memorize are polyatomic, polyatomic. And uh, polyatomic ions that I will write here for you. Polyatomic means it has many atoms inside, of course. So, so we start with this one, not uh, necessarily all of our, our polyatomic, but some are polyatomic, some are simple ones. The polyatomic are right here for you. So <clears throat> uh, the one that you have to know is hydrogen. Hydrogen ion is H+. Plus. And we have hydroxide ion, I put it here. We have hydroxide ion, we have ammonium, which is NH4 positive, we have nitrate, this is nitrate, nitrite, sorry, a nitrate I say. So this is nitrate and this is sulfate, is O4 ones. And we have carbonate and I thought it was a word as a written H N and sulfide. Um sulfide minus two minus. And yes, these are all so now in the ionic compounds. Ionic compounds. If you want to write the formula, it should be somehow that the charges of the individual ions must cancel out to produce an overall charge of zero. For example, we have zinc and oxygen, so it gives us zinc oxide. How do I write it? I know that the Z, Zn, the charge is 2 plus, and oxygen is 2 minus. So what should I do? When I want to write, first I have to write the ions, after that I have to swap the charges. This one goes under this one and this one here, so it becomes it N two O two. But I need to make it as simple as I can, so I just <coughs> um, cancel out these two, so it becomes Z N O. So this is the formula of the compound ionic compound zinc oxide. <coughs> so as you can see here, uh, two uh, plus and two minus they cancel out each other.
Now you can pause the video and you can work out this one to yourself, ammonium nitrate if you like. And the first thing that you have to first uh, find is that the ions that are involved in the formula, into the formula. Then you have to write down the formula of the compound. So for ammonium, if you still remember <coughs> what the ammonium is, the ammonium ion is NH4+. Plus. And for the nitrate is NO3 minus. So how should I write now the compound? So there are the ion lines. So I just swap the charges and the numbers here it becomes NH4 1 and NO3 minus so 1. So because it's 1, so we call NH4 NO3. That's the formula of the compound. Now we have another example, lithium sulfide. So if you want to work out the formula of the compound, first you have to write the ions. The lithium ion, lithium ion is Li positive, one positive. And the sulfide ion is S, if you still remember, is 2 minus. So now the next step is to just swap in the number to work out the formula. It becomes Li, S, this one becomes 2, this one becomes 1. So the overall becomes Li2S. So this is the formula of the lithium sulfide compound. So let's work out this one. You can again pause the video if you like. So we have aluminum oxide. The ions are aluminum and oxide. So Al, uh, if you remember, is still a methyl and it is third group. So it is two positive. And oxides is O. So the oxygen, the uh, oxide, the oxygen actually is ion is two minus. So the next step is just to work out the formula by swapping these charges to become Al two and O three. So this is the formula of the compound named as aluminum oxide. Now you are asked to work out the formula of the ionic compound named as magnesium hydroxide. First step, you have to write down the ions. Magnesium is Mg. It is in a group through 2, so it becomes 2 positive. Hydroxide is OH minus. That's what you have to memorize. Now, the next step, you need to swap, to swap the numbers of the charges and put under each of the ion here. So it becomes uh, 2 given to that one and 1 here. So for 1, I don't write. No need to write. But the other one is 2H. But because these two is for both of them, means we have now 2 hydrogen and 2 oxygen. So I should put in a bracket or parenthesis. So put 2 here. It means that it has 2 hydrogen and 2 oxygen because 2 will be multiplied into each of the number of the atoms. So it is magnesium hydroxide. Let's have a look at this question. It says, it asks you to balance this equation. First, you have to write out the formula of this equation, and after that, you have to balance it out. So, it says that the solid element of phosphorus, it is P4, is already given to you, reacts with fluorine gas to produce gaseous phosphorus pentafluoride. So, how do you write this equation? The first thing is that you have to remember, first, which elements or which um, compounds do, do you have here? It is, and the state also is very important, the state of the, that matter. So it is solid, elemental, phosphorus, so P4. You have P4, which is in the solid state. It has been added up, reacted with the fluorine gas. How do I write fluorine gas? It's an important, it's a gas, but it are diatomic molecules. So like hydrogen, which is H2 and oxygen O2, nitrogen N2, and all the halogens like Cl2, F2, they are diatomic molecules. They cannot, you cannot find them as a single atom when they are in the gas form. So it is F2, and it is in a gaseous state. So it gives, uh, produces gaseous phosphorus pentafluoride. How should I write this? So, I just first, the state is gas, so it is a gaseous material, and phosphorus, PF, I know I will have PF, but how many P, how many F? It gets phosphorus, pentafluoride, it has 5F. So, this is the formula. Now, let's work out 
and they balance out this equation because as you can see, we have four P here, but one P here, so, and two and five here. So this is not balanced, we have to balance all this out. So we have this equation now, we need to balance this out. So let's ask first to write down um, the reactant as a product uh, and both atoms they have is P and F at this side and we have P and F at the other side too. So what we need to know how many phosphorus do we have? We have four here, we have one here so it's not balanced and here we have two and here we have five. So this one needs to be balanced out too. So let's first work out with the four here and one here. It means that okay if I want if I put four here in front of the PF5, then I can have four P. But what is changing here is F now because at this side we're gonna have four times five because twenty. Twenty F. So in order to balance this one too, I need to put a coefficient. 10 in front of the F2. So now this one is also balanced. So this is the final balance equation of this reaction. So I will now provide you with more exercises. You can try to do them and then bring them when, once, when you come back to the class so we can discuss the answer together. Thank you.